Good morning and welcome to Prayer and Devotion on this Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, October 11th, and that was Mark Miller's Draw the, Draw the Circle Wide. Uh, the B, I don't know what the B stands for, United Methodist Church. It's not Bridgewater, but some United Methodist Church around the country. Um, Sunshine Choir was singing that um, from their album, Draw the Circle Wide. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that start to our day together. Um, today we're going to be looking at Matthew 7. And the title for our devotion is Freedom from Judging, Freedom for Mercy. Freedom from Judging, Freedom for Mercy. Um, and we're going to be looking at Matthew 7, but let me say good morning to all of you. It's good to be with you today. I know some of you probably had a nice day off yesterday. Um, I hope that you got a chance to enjoy some extra rest. Um, good morning, Barbara and Celia. It's good to have you both here today. Praying for both of you and Gail and Janet. Welcome. Holding you in prayer. Good morning, Andrew and Marilyn. I'm glad you're here holding you both in prayer. And good morning, Michelle and Daniel. It's good to have you both here praying for you today. Good morning, Megan and good morning, Sue. Welcome, praying for both of you. And Vinette and Barbara Dawson. I'm glad you're both here holding you both in prayer. Good morning, Beatrice and Renetta. It's good to have both of you here holding you in prayer. And Shelly and Genevieve, I'm glad you're here praying for you today. Good morning, Labake and Augusta. Welcome, praying for you. And Audrey and Susan, it's good to have you here praying for you. And good morning, Cecilia and Admire. I'm not sure if I said good morning to you, Augusta and Blanca. It's good to be with, and Betty. I'm glad all of you are here today, praying for each one of you as we start this day together. So welcome. Um, today we're looking at Matthew 7, beginning in verse 1. And um, so I think I'm... I think I'm just going one through four, or one through three. Um, Matthew 7, one through three. So as you open up your Bibles, um, my name is Cindy Stauffer, and I am blessed to be the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. Uh, we are on the corner of George and Liberty Street in the heart of the city of New Brunswick, and I'm glad you're here today. It's good to have you here. Um, let's jump into scripture. Matthew 7, 1 says, Do not judge, so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment that you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? I'm gonna say it one more time. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? So our devotion this morning comes from Henry Nowen's Bread for the Journey, um, and it is entitled Freedom from Judging, Freedom for Mercy. This is what he says. He says, we spend an enormous amount of energy making up our minds about other people. Not a day goes by 
without somebody doing or saying something that evokes in us the need to form an opinion about them. We hear a lot, see a lot, and know a lot. The feeling that we have to sort it all out in our minds and make judgments about it can be quite oppressive. The Desert Fathers said that judging others is a heavy burden, while being judged by others is a light one. Once we can let go of our need to judge others, we will experience an immense inner freedom. Once we are free from judging, we will also be free for mercy. Let's remember Jesus' words, do not judge, and you will not be judged. So I've been thinking a lot about this on many fronts recently. Uh, you know, we are incredibly divided. I see there's some politics going into today's um, chat and you're gonna find I probably will not engage in this and that's okay. Um, we are very divided. We have very strong ideas of what is right and what is wrong. We have very strong ideas about who the other is, who belongs in, who doesn't belong in, who's aligned with this uh, leader and who's aligned with this leader. Um, who are the people that are bringing down our world and who are the people that we want to we wanna connect with and fight with and like there's a whole lot of that going on. And in the midst of that, we are also coming off of a pandemic where we've been so isolated and we have no idea what the other person is walking through. And what I'm noticing as a pastor is that people are butting up against each other, you know, uh, and some weeks are harder than others. Like they're, they're just, um, we've run out of patience for one another. We've forgotten how to live with one another. We've forgotten how to love one another. And um, there's a whole lot of that going on. Just, uh, I feel as if, one of my main roles is putting out fires um, that we are all setting in the lives around us. And what I also realized, something that my husband taught me, and he didn't, I don't know where, he probably, maybe he learned it from his parents, it's possible. I don't know where he learned this from, but he will say to me, he used to say to me a lot, it's not about you, Cindy, it's not about you. <laughs> It's like, it's not all about you. And that wisdom has, it saved me. It saved me. Because the truth is, most of the time what we are looking at, most of the time when we are in um, like a heated fight with someone, we are not looking at the full picture. We can't know what that person is going through. We can't know what happened to them earlier that day. We can't know what happened in their home life years ago. We just can't, we can't know. I recently heard a quote, um, you can't know that somebody's roof is leaking until you go, until you've been in their home with them. You know, you can't see it fully. And that is the truth for each one of us. Each person that you meet today, there is something that they are walking through. And as much as we think we need to sort it out and figure out who's with us and who's against us, who, you know, all of that stuff, it doesn't help us. It's exhausting, somebody wrote that. Judging is exhausting, I totally agree. The truth is, um, we need to spend more time listen, listening, maybe seeking a little bit deeper, because when someone is reacting in a way, or 
when we're up against something that we've never seen before or whatever it is, if we take the time to sit and listen to this person that we have othered, we may find out there's another story and the world needs more compassion and less judging. I need more compassion and less judging. You need it as well. So this is what I'm going to propose today. Pause. When you are in the midst of something that looks like it's about to blow up or you are ready to, to start judging someone that maybe you've met for the first time, maybe it's somebody you work with that drives you crazy, I invite you to pause and be curious. I've done this before with you, I know. Pause and listen. Maybe ask a question. You don't have to. But sometimes we find out um, that people are walking through some really challenging stuff. And what you're looking at, the reaction that you're looking at, has nothing to do with what you think it has to do with. Maybe we could be a little more compassionate and merciful with the people we meet. And I'm gonna go into this too. Maybe we could be a little more compassionate and merciful with ourselves as well. So today, when you are, I had a day where I thought, I mean, it must have been like 10 fires in one day. And I thought, oh Lord, don't give me another fire. But when I was willing to stop and pause and realize there are a lot of people going through a lot of things and I don't know the fullness of what they're facing but I can be compassionate this day so as we come into prayer I invite you to bring in all those situations maybe it's something that happened yesterday you know that you regretted that you reacted in a certain way or judged someone a certain way I invite you to bring it today Lay it at the foot of Jesus. Jesus understands. I'm sure that if Jesus were to follow his knee-jerk reaction as his humanity as he hung from the cross, there must have been moments when he was frustrated. There was that wonderful moment in the garden when he was like, can you not just stay awake? Um, <laughs> there are times when Jesus was frustrated as well. But there were also moments when he was able to see more deeply to the person that was next to him. So I encourage you to do that today as well. Let us pray. God, we come before you today acknowledging that too often we have been sucked into the world's judgment into the world's division. We have reacted to the reactions of others and we just seem to keep hurting one another. We just keep to, we just keep hitting off of one another and the pain is too much. The pain our world is experiencing is too much. And so today we lay down at your feet our judgments, our reactions, our negative uh, interactions with one another. And we ask you to fill us with compassion, compassion for ourselves, we ask you to fill us with mercy as we seek to forgive ourselves. And then lead us, Lord, to live lives of compassion and mercy to the people around us. 
Help us to pause and not react. Help us to slow down and take a breath and see the other person the way that you see them. To see ourselves the way that you see us. Help us, Lord, to be a part of your mercy in the world around us and to begin to see one another more fully through your eyes. We ask all of this in your name, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, this, this day, I encourage you to be filled with more compassion and mercy for yourself, for the people you meet, and to take more pauses, to look more deeply, be more curious at the people that you're meeting on the journey today. God loves you, my friends. And so do I. Have a blessed day.